always believe what you read in the media? Following a disaster or crisis, destinations are not only faced with the daunting task of rebuilding infrastructure, facilities and communities, but also their image. Here the focus is on providing correct and consistent information to the public and enhancing the image of the destination that may have lost its appeal as a consequence of what took place. The media is of course an important stakeholder in terms of communicating information concerning a crisis or disaster to locals and people far and wide, including tourists. But it can be argued that the media may do more damage than good when reporting on a disaster or crisis and greatly interfere with the image recovery efforts of destination managers. How are tourists feel about travelling to a destination that has been affected by a disaster is heavily influenced by the media. This is because the media are considered to be autonomous change agents. Such image formation agents have high levels of credibility among the public, yet are not under the direct control of the destination. We therefore need to observe the way such events are portrayed to the members of the public. This allows us to gain an understanding of the impact media reporting is likely to have on the tourist perceptions of what took place and how they might be feeling towards visiting the destination. Research conducted by myself and Judith Mayer on the media reporting of the Blue Mountains bushfires identified four key issues surrounding media coverage of disastrous events. These include the geographic references used to refer to the event, for example, the Victorian bushfires, the media's agenda or what they want us to think is happening, negative framing of the event, that is how they want us to feel about it, and the media's use of metaphorical and exaggerated headlines that lead the audience to believe things are actually worse than what they are. All of these are likely to work against the image recovery efforts of the destination. Let's talk about these in more detail. Geographic references used to report a disastrous event vary dramatically in accordance to how far away the audience is located. When the media is reporting to local or intrastate audiences, they will use the names of local townships that are affected. When the media reports to interstate audiences, they will often title the disaster using the name of the state. For example, instead of the Blue Mountains bushfires, here in Queensland, those fires were reported as the New South Wales bushfires. Overseas, the Blue Mountains bushfires were termed the Australian bushfires. So the further we are away from a disaster, the more confused we are as to its specific location and the affected areas. This is the way the Blue Mountains bushfires were portrayed in the USA. This is both false and misleading and would have potentially led to cancellations not just around the Blue Mountains area, but even as far as the Northern Territory. Here is a more realistic reference for the region. Think about the difference this reference would have had to tourists from different parts of the world versus the previous image. Secondly, we observed in our study on the Blue Mountains that the media had a certain agenda when covering this rather small scale disaster. The media were very concerned with A, making the disaster top of mind and B, making everyone feel very sad about the event. This particular headline was released on Christmas Day, months following the event and right in the middle of the region's peak holiday season. These negatively phrased emotive headlines would have had a significant impact on the perceptions of potential tourists. After all, who wants to go on holidays somewhere that makes you feel sad? When we talk about media framing, we refer to the lens through which an individual sees the media coverage. The media will attempt to manipulate that lens through placing a negative or positive slant on their coverage. Here are some examples of the frames that we identified in our study. As you can see, there is a real trend towards negative terms and phrases in these headlines. This kind of attention creates concern among tourists as to the general ambience of the destination, which again is unlikely to provide a positive and upbeat tourist experience. Finally, the media's use of metaphors, hyperboles and highly emotive phrasing in disaster-related headlines is problematic. This, combined with the imbalanced framing, tells us that disastrous events are subject to sensationalism and even misrepresentation of what has taken place. 
Seldom do the media counter their negative frames by providing sufficient facts in the copy of their articles that allow readers to create an informed opinion about a disaster or crisis. In a tourism context, this responsibility lies with the destination managers who are consequently left with the task of managing the negative perceptions, preventing cancellations and maintaining visitor levels. How have these four key issues surrounding media coverage affected Queensland's disaster recovery efforts? Queensland is a destination that has also experienced a number of significant natural disasters. Cyclone Yasi, the Queensland floods, and Cyclone Ida, to name a few. Queensland's tourism managers have therefore had to work hard to manage and respond to unwelcome media attention. What can we learn about media management from our Queensland tourism managers? What often happens in a crisis or in a disaster is everybody has an opinion, everybody has a perspective on what is going on, what might be going on, and inevitably in that situation you have the potential for panic to spread, for rumours to spread, for misinformation to emerge, and inefficiency as a consequence in responding to the disaster. If you have a co coherent, comprehensive communication system with and, and you need trusted and credible spokespeople. Ideally, that is the head of state in whatever area is affected or the highest ranking public, public official. And we have seen this in Queensland with the Premier taking charge at various, in various situations. And then we can all repeat the same information and we share all the information. We are, all, have, all have access to the information. This is not about spin as is sometimes sort of suggested. This is about sharing the full picture with everybody all the time. That is the best defence against uh, panic. So it appears there are a number of important steps for tourism managers when attempting to mitigate negative media commentary. Let's go back to the opening question. Do you always believe what you read in the media? Tourism managers should also keep an eye on how the media is reporting disastrous events affecting their destination. This will enable them to successfully mitigate any unnecessary concerns held by potential tourists.